on Fix Radio with me, Joel Bardle and Todd Von Joel. And this afternoon, we've got a very special guest. We've got Kevin Tingley, also known as the Paint Warrior, with us in the studio. Make some noise for the Paint Yay! Warrior! Yay! Kevin has over three quarters of a million followers on TikTok with over 25 million likes racked up on his content. Is that all, Kevin? Blimey. Uh, right, we will talk to Kevin about his success on the platform, what impact that's had on his business and all of the exciting things it's allowed him to do. And there's also going to be music from Simple Minds, Rihanna, Kings of Leon and more. TVJ, Kevin. Hello, chaps. Hello. Welcome How to, you? Welcome How to you? the studio. Very excited to have Kevin in today. What yeah. a story this man's got. Going to be a great guest. Yeah, absolutely, mate. You both well? Both keeping all yeah, right? Yeah, I'm all good. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. No, no problem we've at all. all. We've also got another person in the studio making his debut on the P&D number one <laughs> trade show. It's assistant producer Jack. How you doing, Jack? Hey! Hello, Jack. <laughs> Give us a shout. <laughs> He's not shouting, he's opted to sit there and go bright again? red, but he... Oh, there, there he is. is. There he's he is. In. Yeah, it's a packed house today, isn't it? It's now, just... listen, outside the studio today, guys, on my way in, I noticed there was police, including a forensics van, and I reckon they're here to find out where our fan mail's gone, because this week, yet again, zero fan mail. What's going on, guys? I, I don't know, mate. I don't know. Forensic, though, please. Forensic? Well, so obviously someone's nicked them, because there's no way that Housewife's Choice and the Guru aren't going to be getting sacks of fan mail <laughs> each week. So I'm thinking it's gone on a missing list. So if anyone sees the fan mail, send it in, along with merch. We love merch. <laughs> we'll get on to that later. That's the only reason why you're saying it. You just want merch. Well, I can see some merch. The Paint Warriors merch. brought Listen. some in, but we're going to talk about that we later will on. Do. We, will do. we will do indeed. Right, OK, let's get the firm... We'll talk to Kevin about his experience on TikTok after our first song this hour. It's Give it away from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Right, you're listening to the Painting and Decorating Show. I'm Joel Bardle with Tov Von Joel, and with us in the studio today is the paint warrior, Kevin Tingley, who has over three quarters of a million followers on the platform. Right, Kevin. Hello. Hello. <laughs> right, so why TikTok, and what made you want to start posting decorating content on that platform? Um, if I'm honest, I, I didn't want to. It was just, it was my kids got me into it right it was, i think a bit like everyone it was the, the kids thing weren't it and um I, I posted a video and the first one went absolutely mental so we just sort of carried on what going. was that video what was the content of that i just cut in a plug socket <laughs> <laughs> i literally cut in a plug socket. well yeah. towards the end I, I slapped a bit of paint over the face of it right but it was to that uh billy eilish song you know bad guy and as soon as it said <laughs> bad guy i went wallop oh, and, um, right. Everyone just went, no, what are you doing? Yeah. Oh, because well, you've done it so nice. It's yeah, one of those satisfying like videos yeah. and, and then, then sabotage. Yeah. And it's incredible, though, when people use that sort of terminology, go, it's like watching paint dry. But who knew that over yeah. three quarters of a million people actually enjoy watching that stuff? That's it's it. just mad, isn't yeah. it? And also, it's a metaphor for life how we do things neatly, and sometimes we all self-sabotage. <laughs> Learning. Psycho <laughs> psychotherapy on the show today. <laughs> yeah, definitely a psycho. <laughs> Right, so Kevin, how long have you been posting on TikTok and uh, what types of content have you found has really helped the growth of your profile? Um, coming up to three years now, we've been on there. Um, first of all, it started off your, your quick, sweet and simple videos, you know, mm. just a quick cutting in uh, satisfying thing. Um, but over the last year, it's like they, they're trying to eliminate them quick ones. So I'm finding sort of a minute long, maybe three minute long videos are doing quite well now, oh, maybe okay. more, more tutorial. Because I thought that TikTok was basically like, it was like short and sweet. Oh, clips, it was, wasn't yeah, it? yeah, mm. definitely. And they worked really well. And they're the ones that actually racked our numbers up. So right. like, just a quick cutting in, yeah. like 30 million views. Um, and I feel like that sort of TikTok is actually sort of that sort of, um, uh, what do you call it? The way those videos are set up, I think that's what kind of carried on. You see in that sort of type of, the same kind of videos going over to Instagram yeah. and Facebook, yeah. that yeah. kind of similar setup, how they do these. And it's, they are addictive, them videos yeah. as well. You can sit there scrolling through. I'm, times I'm on Facebook and I've been flicking through. I'm, I'm not on TikTok, to be honest, but I've been watching these videos and I'm like, I've just watched someone made a chair. Then I've yeah. watched some other yeah, yeah. Film, like, how pencils are made. I thought, what am I watching, man? But you see, it's so addictive. You do get sucked in, don't you? Yeah, but it's, it just shows you, though, that people actually like... I mean, I've seen I've seen the videos you do. I've seen you, like, cleaning out rollers and the cutting in and stuff like that. But it is really, like, you do really get kind of engrossed in these videos. I think yeah. it's, um, yeah, it's really well done. Is it like, do you find that when you... You're still on the tools, you yeah. said. So when you do a job, do you sort of, rather than just quickly taking videos as part of the job, do you now sort of factor these videos in going, right, that would be a good point when I get to this phase to do a good video. Like, for example, 
cutting in a windowsill with, with, with woodwork paint or do you just organically just get loads and then choose which one you want to post? Yeah. Um, now I'm finding myself now I'm sort of pre-planning it or if I've got a job or a decent colour, I'm like, right, I'm going to do this with that. So it's very much in the forefront yeah, of your mind. Yeah. yeah. But before I would just, um, yeah, just loads and loads of little clips. I'd always have my phone in my hand and I'll just be painting mm. and I'll just, yeah, I think. Do I'll you ever talk over the clips? No, but, are you conscious? Because I'm conscious of the customer being like close yeah. by it and I'm chatting away and I think they must think I'm a mental case because I'm on my own and they're just talking. I'm just coming in, you know, like Muppet, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, always I'll, I'll edit the video and then I'll try and do a voiceover. So I'm explaining right, what I'm doing okay. as, it, as I'm doing it. And it's, yeah. yeah, it's hard to do actually. Yeah, no, it is. I know I know that full well because I thought, oh, well, I'll start trying to make some more videos now. Because like Inst when I was on Instagram, well, I am on Instagram. And it was just literally photos. And I tried to do more video content and just things of me just working away. And, and I thought, I, I, I actually want to do stuff where I'm actually talking to the camera, but I hate it. Yeah. I know I do this. We do this mm. like, every week, but I just can't stand. Like, the, as soon as someone's pointing the camera in my face and start, oh, just start talking, I'm like, I don't know yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> a bit like what I'm doing now. But <laughs> well, these videos, they are like sort of like mini films, aren't they? Because you've got a beginning, a middle and an end if you're cutting in. So it's quite satisfying for the viewer to watch. And it's just mm. that engrossing content, quick, short, sharp, Bursts of satisfaction they get from yeah. watching them. So I can see the appeal and I've got a sort of background in film and stuff as well. So I sort of understand the concept of why, why these things are so appealing. And then obviously why, when you went back over the plug socket, everyone was like, no, yeah, it's like, yeah. you're, like in a film, you're about to save the day and then you fall off the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, what do you think decorators need to understand about TikTok and how it differs from the other platforms like Instagram and Twitter? Um, well, tick, TikTok's definitely a bit more fun. Um, if you if you want to get noticed, you've you've got to catch their eye like within the first three or four seconds. Mm. So like, I, I see a lot of these um, videos, and I'm like, that should have done really really well. Right. But what they tend to do is like they walk around the job, and then you're bored, and yeah. then they'll start getting their paint out. But really, you want to have that. Because you've so you, literally got, well, like you're saying, if it's just a second. Yeah, literally. yeah. So if you've got a white room and you, some brown paint, the first two seconds, you you want to just be recording brown paint on the wall straight up. Right. And then they're like, oh, that looks weird. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, but, and you said about music as well. So music plays are like a key part yeah, in it, like getting yeah. a catchy song or like a, a current song as well. I think just what, I mean, a lot of the songs I don't actually like myself, but they're <laughs> trending. Yeah. So yeah. I'm flicking through TikTok and you you, you notice that there's always um, a song and it's usually like a bird dancing to it. Yeah. Um, and then, because they're just, the views and the likes are so high, I'll save that song. Right. And then I'll do a video and I'll put that song into it and then that song's like the trending tune. Yeah. Well, these yeah. songs are now coming back in the charts, aren't they? Yeah. Like you hear yeah. one that's sort of a famous from 40 years ago or something and now it gets used again. Was that, suddenly was a a it was in Stranger Things. What was the, I can't remember oh, the song yeah. now. Um, oh. Running up that hill. Yeah. Can't well, look at Neil yeah. Diamond and Sweet Caroline. The boxing has brought that right back. Yeah. Can you imagine his royalties? Like, yeah. Da, da, da. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay, right. Let's talk about the content you post in more detail next. Here's Simple Minds. Don't you forget about me on Fix Radio. I'm Joel Bardle with Tov and Joel. And joining us in the studio is Kevin Tingley, the paint warrior. Um, so, Kevin, we um, we keep saying that you just... Oh, actually, tell us, how many, um, how many followers have you got across all the uh, social media platforms? Um, so, we are currently on Instagram... Facebook, TikTok, um, all three. We're about 1.2 million now. Nice. Massive. Nice. Yeah. Um, so, so what have been some interesting experiences that have come with that success with those numbers? Obviously, we get a lot of work inquiries. Um, there's there's good and bad, actually. Mm. Um, the good is, obviously, I'm um, always busy. Um, yeah. A lot of inquiries. Um, the bad is people just phone me up for a chat. Sometimes right. <laughs> I had, to, had to remove all of my details just because people are phoning me up and I'm trying to have a roast at home or something. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, but, yeah. But as a as a whole, I mean, the, the main thing, obviously, I'm chuffed. I've got all my my stuff going on, but um, yeah, I'm just busy. I'm do, just you, busy. do you receive many unsolicited pictures of of decorators and? And their <laughs> tools? No, no, not yet. <laughs> do you, do you Wait till later. Yeah. One, <laughs> yeah, one ready for you. It's just going to airdrop it now. Yeah. <laughs> what are we talking about airdropping? <laughs> 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 
Um, oh, God, yeah, yeah we don't so, use three inches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like your werewolf story, Joel, <laughs> at the party werewolf? when you went to the fancy dress party oh, right. as a werewolf. Yeah, we'd tell that one another day. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> where are we? Right. Yeah, so obviously, so there's people obviously you know, want to get in touch with you about decorating their property, but there must be like um, other kind of businesses that we want to actually want, want you to get involved with their, with their companies or brands and stuff like that. Things must like that come, up, yeah. come about. Yeah, I mean, I've had so many um, inquiries, but if I'm honest, I've, I've turned probably 70, 80% of them down. I just don't yeah. want to, um, I try to keep it all authentic. If It's like I could easily make a living off working with every brand. Yeah. But, um, I don't want to sell something that I don't use or don't necessarily that, that's like. A, I mean, I, you know what? I really admire that because I think it's so easy because people go, use this, use this. we're going to send you this paint out. Mm. But they want you to turn around and go, it's the best paint in the world. But if it's rubbish, yeah. then you don't, you know, people are going to look and you're going to... The thing is, I will get the emails and the phone calls saying, oh, he said to use this. But as it stands, everyone's, I'll get messages every now and again saying, Do you know what, everything that you've recommended um, is really, really good. And yeah. I want to try and keep it. Like that. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's really authentic. conscientious as well. Mm. I, on Absolutely. the other hand, will sell anything. <laughs> yeah. right? so anyone listening, I will sell it. I'll flow yeah. whatever it is, I'll do it. <laughs> right? <laughs> there, 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 there's people out there that do it, though, don't they? they? It's just, I, don't, I can't get my head around it. I'm, I'm at feet, also, I'll do it. Yeah? <laughs> the Let the me know. Slag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If the money's right, I'll just sit in the bath, cover myself in, <laughs> cover myself in gloss. Get the cork out and go mental. Get your water. <laughs> oh, oh dear, right. So, um, so how comfortable are you with being TikTok famous? Do you know what? It just doesn't actually feel like anything. If if I'm honest, people more more people recognise me off Instagram. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Because I think on TikTok, I've got a lot of followers in the UK. But if you look at your following, they're, they're like UK, America. Um, Europe, so yeah, yeah, but I think majority of people just know me from Instagram. Has anyone ever stopped you in the street yet? Yeah, 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 all the time. People take pictures of my vans and they yeah. beep while they're driving next to me. Mike, is there some sort of fake paint warrior or someone that's got the name paint warrior going around? <laughs> <laughs> no, because didn't we talk about it? Because I was trying to, I've got you on socials, I follow yeah. you, but then I think there was, there was some discussion if there was another one or someone masquerading as the paint warrior. Oh, don't oh know. maybe. Or maybe that's not, maybe I've got that completely wrong. The paint destroyer, it's like yeah. your nemesis. <laughs> or maybe it was someone else. But I thought there was something like you can you can find them on Instagram. They've got they've just slightly different branding. They've got much yeah, less followers. That might just be one of oh, them. Oh, no, like, there is another one. Yeah, is there it? is another one. Yeah. Well, a paint warrior. Paint warrior. Yeah, yeah. They, and they, yeah. they must. We ain't got the wrong one, in, have we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, we've got the real paint warrior because he's here with the merch. <laughs> So we okay. This is a good opportunity. Does the fake paint warrior want to set up a charity boxing match with the real paint warrior? I can do that. We love yeah. to do this. Send in your stats. We'll get the fake paint warrior in next yeah. week, and then we'll have a big showdown. <laughs> there's only one paint warrior. He's here. He's got yeah, the merch. You're our paint fame. warrior. Yeah. Uh, what kind of content do you enjoy creating most for TikTok, and why? Um, I, I like I like trying the tutorials now i think they're, they're they they do really well and I, I like the feedback you know i like the feedback and i like i like people you know people go out their way and message me and just say do you know what you've really helped me today and i was like well that, that actually means a lot so oh, that's nice man yeah yeah wicked um all right you got any other questions todd no, no, I'm, he's, I'm he's, busy on, his, having, he's no, on his phone. I'm, having, I'm trying to find the fake paint warrior now. I'm going to track him down. I'm going to, he's a catfish. I'm going to get him. <laughs> well, yeah, well, you find him and then we'll come back to that. <laughs> right, okay, let's talk about some of the work you've completed with your business after some more music. Here's the Kings of Leon with You Somebody. This is the Painting and Decorating Show. I'm Joel Bardle with Tov on Joel, and we're talking to the paint warrior, Kevin Tingley, about his success on TikTok as a decorator. Uh, Kevin, what kind of work do you take on currently and who have you got working with you? Um, do you know what? I, I can, I'm at that stage where I can pick and choose what I want to do, which is pretty nice. cool. Mm. Um, I've got a couple of guys that I sub work out to. You know, I get a lot around London um, and they're, they're not far from London, so I, I sort of just keep, keep them busy. Um, myself, I, I, do you know what? I really wanted to get away from, you know, just them standard jobs where you know someone wants their downstairs toilet painting oh, fair enough, i just yeah. can't like do that anymore I, I 
setting up and packing up in the same day. You know, I'd like to be on a job for a few weeks. So I take, tend to just take on the bigger projects for myself. Well, that's fair enough, mate. Was actually, interestingly, we were talking about that in the last show, wasn't mm. we? I said I'm actually quite happy to kind of carry on doing that sort of work. Yeah. But, you know, I think it's just what everyone's sort of preferences at the end of the day. So is that kind of, is it still kind of residential or is it like more commercial, bit of both? Yeah, definitely both. Um, mm. I do prefer the commercial side of it. Okay. Yeah, it's better money. Well, that's what I was, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely better money. Clean work. Um, the only downfall is, content-wise, is it's just not really ideal, you know, because mm. it's just your standard white yeah. offices, magnolia walls. Bit yeah. Of, yeah. Quick question here, Kevin. It's a, it's a one-word answer. Spray or nay? Uh, <sighs> Uh, There's a bit of both then. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> He's hedging his bets. It's annoying because I do do both, but um, I wouldn't do a whole job just spraying. If you had to lose one forever, what would you lose? Spraying. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> hey. <laughs> We're losing spray fans, mate. I tell you. <laughs> yeah, they love us. <laughs> they love us on this show. <laughs> no, it's a good question, though. Um, what kind of inquiries do you get through TikTok and all the other social media platforms as well? And who are some notable names you can tell us about working for? Um... So I haven't, not really anyone proper famous, to be fair. I've had a few inquiries from a, from a few blue ticks, but, oh, okay. um, you know, I mean, the most famous person is, I've done Karen Brady's office, but that was years ago. No, before no, I've just done Karen Brady's office. No, but nothing, that was the know. world before. <laughs> I Joel hates even... Karen Brady because he's, he's part of the Millwall Bushwhackers. And oh, yeah. Karen Brady <laughs> is responsible <laughs> for the ICF West Ham football hooligan unit. So there's a conflict of interest Keep it up, there. you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> there's a conflict of interest there. Joel's his whole back is the Millwall Lion, yeah, his whole back. No, no, blue. Wait, my, I've got such a hairy back that I actually shave eyes. <laughs> he the is the lion. <laughs> like a lion. Um, right, have you got any other? Have you got any notable jobs coming up? Um, not really. No, if I'm honest, it's a bit boring. I've, I've got, I've got a really cool ceiling coming up, but it's not for anyone famous. It's right, like, okay. It's, it's a really, it, you know, what, it's probably one of the highest paid ceilings I'll ever paint. Highest what? Sorry, you know it's like it's really it's really good money. Is it oh, really right, intricate right, okay. or something like that? Yeah, what? it's got like little angels on it. It's got oh, like, wow. it's okay, well, like the mouldings, mouldings. And stuff like that. Yeah. Is it like, the, like the ornate cornicing round yeah, it? So yeah, where's yeah. that in? What kind of property is it? In? That's um, it's in it's on Harley Street. Oh, nice. Ooh, very nice. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. okay. Is it one of those ones where you're going to have to set up a platform and yeah. lie on your back like Michelangelo? Yeah, exactly. Going and back I'll tell you what, it's a, it's about as a little bit bigger than this room, and it's going to take yeah. me probably four weeks. Is that on your own? Is that spraying? Yeah. Or is that a hand? Nah, all hand brush. Really? Oh, yeah. wow, that's going to You know what's going to be mad? Because all the blood will flow down from your yeah. fingers, so you're, you're, it's going to be mad on your arm. Yeah, really it's going to be hard work. That's why it's going to take so long. It's just mm. What's the kind of paint spec you've got using that? Is there anything in particular? We're sort of still going through um, samples. Um, mm. We got we got to send them off. We got to get them tested. Uh, you know, we've, it's got to be refurbished pictures. to the exact you know original. So, so this is like an old like sort of almost like a period property. Yeah, then, is it? yeah, like, yeah. You, we're not allowed to do anything with it other than restore it. Oh wow! Oh, that's, um, that's a nice job though, isn't they? Yeah. I mean, they're re rewarding jobs, yeah, yeah. and then you know the pictures afterwards. You'd definitely be, be like effing and blinding through it. You know, <laughs> I do anyway. Yeah. Yeah. What you said about painting the toilet. I'll be yeah. and anyway, I, I've done a famous ceiling. I did Ray Winston's ceiling. Did you? Yeah, my pal Ray. Yeah. Oh, my nice. pal Ray. <laughs> Me and Ray. No, I did. I'm, I'm friends with his daughter Jamie. Um, I met her on filming work, and yeah, they needed a decorator, and I did his ceiling. Oh, nice. Just white. Nice. Just white. Did yeah. you do? Did you do any more there? I did a, and a bit of snagging. It was just, it was one very long day. I he, did. What he, he snagged he called, your work? Didn't he, he called you back to do snagging. You no, ain't been back to a bit of a shock. With dead, 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 he, sat, balls in it. he sat me down while I looked at him, sort of dewy eyed, and went, "How long's that taking? And how much?" And then he gave me a nice drink on top. And they are they are a lovely family. You know when you see him and you think, "Oh, what are they going to be like in real life?" They're everything that you'd expect and more. Big shout out to the whole Winston family. Uh, they are lovely play. people. That's nice great. one. Right, okay, we're running out of time on today's show, so let's talk about some of the products you have on the market. Next, Kevin, you're listening to Fix Radio, the Builder Station. I'm Joel Bardo with Tov and Joel, and we've been talking to the paint warrior, Kevin Tingley, who has over three quarters of a million followers on TikTok. Kevin, you've launched your own range of brushes, and we have some, uh, we have some other merch, which, uh, I'm going to do that again. Kevin, you've launched a range of brushes and some other merch which people can find at paintwarrior.co.uk. Todd's in the middle of opening up the box now, the I've brushes. I've got the merch, so, I love the merch. Yeah, 
he's, he's, he's unraveling now. I mean, this is great radio where he's actually yeah, getting yeah. him out. I mean, this you can't is like... So, but if you are looking on the, uh, the social... Do you know what? It's quite, beautiful. Well, I opened up the box. It's really attractive, glossy packaging. It's been personally signed. Inside, you've got a note from the Warrior. It's called the Warrior's Note. And also, a packet of squishies. Now, this Whoa. is a small, fun size pack, Kevin. I think <laughs> yeah. you could look with getting slightly yeah. bigger food merch, but this is great. I'm going to have one now. And this all looks good. Let's, now, the, the man who knows all about the tools is the guru. So, the, the only well, person that can give this a full evaluation. That's it. I mean, do you know what? Just taking it out the. Uh, I've got the 2.5 inch, what's that, the rat tail uh, angled brush? Yep. Angle, oval. Oval. That's nice, man. The filaments feel really nice and soft as well. So, how did this even come about? Um, you know, it's something, a dream of mine, They're always, you know, I've always wanted to have my own stuff, but um, after, obviously, getting on social media and things blowing up, it sort of did, did open up a couple of opportunities, so... Mate, it's absolutely wicked, because you've got your own cork as well, you've got yeah. your own range of cork, and I saw yeah. another post on your social media that you've got, like, different colours, so you've got a grey and black one yeah, as well. Yeah. Black Great corks line. was f really difficult to come by. Yeah. Well, this is why I've I done it. Everyone sort of, a few people have mentioned it to me, and... Um, I thought, yeah, why not give it a go? If it works, it works. If it don't, you know. Mate, it's, it's, honestly, it's, that's, it's brilliant. I remember seeing like people when they've got they've got their own discount code. For, like, yeah. and I want a discount code. <laughs> yeah. geezy has got his own brushes, man. Oh, <laughs> He's got his own brushes, own, own I've coke got, as well. I've got a question. Guru, you might know about this as well. Excuse me, I'm knee deep in this. <laughs> Todd's eating the brushes. Why, why is there a new trend that rather than having a rectangle head of the brush, they seem to see more and more Straight oval cut, headed. Mean. Like, no, these, this bit, the metal bit on top oh, of the yeah, brush. Oh, yeah, the oval. Yeah, that's, I'm seeing that more and more oh, right, oval. oval. What's, yeah. what's the difference and why, why does that, why did you choose your brushes to be designed like that rather than the traditional sort of square blocky yeah. housing for the bristles? Well, so I, 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 I love um, the Arrowworthy classic brushes. You yeah, know, the they are really ovals. nice. They're, they're quality brushes. And do yeah. you know what, I just found... With the oval angles, this look like there's a nice taper on it. They go into nothing, and with that oval center, it just draws the paint up quite nice, and you get a nice decent stroke out of it. Mm. So, how, how did you even design it? How do you even like go about creating your own brushes? Oh, uh, it's uh, it's it's hard work. Um, this 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 brush has been going backwards and forwards for um, a long time, and just trying them out, and just mm. you know, you got to be quite picky and. It's, it's really long winded because you know you got to see how long they last um mm. you got to see how well they clean out um there's so many different sort of variables about it it's i didn't really realize what i was taking on if i'm honest like little mm. things like i've got to have my own barcode mm, like right. i didn't even know that i was like i've got to get a barcode yeah. how do i get a barcode yeah and then people saying about the boxes and this and that it's like you know and you and you chosen wood for a handle now i've done a bit of research i'm a, I'm a purdy's fan and i'm definitely a fan of the wood handle on a brush yeah. they say that over time it absorbs your own sweat and stuff and gives actually a better grip than the than the plastic or, or rubbery ones is that a conscious choice i, I mean i yeah, like that i don't like the plastic handles do you? they just don't yeah feel i don't right. know i think you you can kind of tell the difference between a quality, quality brush and a bit of a two bob sort of uh mm. yeah b and q special do you know what i mean and this uh yeah obviously this isn't this is a really this is a really nice brush I mean, the length for the handle as well is a nice length it feels solid it mm. feels like yeah. a proper tool do you know what i mean if i'm honest i would like this handle to probably be an inch shorter really why is that I just I like the length of the beaver tail. Yeah, do you know? I like the shape of this. Yeah, I think it's, it's always like a bit of a personal preference thing. So I know you do like the rat tail ones. I like the shorter handles as well. But you know, I'm not putting down yeah. your brushes already. No, anyway, no, you know no, no, I mean? no, no. The longer handles, yeah. you get the balance. It's like wielding a sword. Yeah. Well, we Anyone that watches forged we'll, in fire. We'll have the beaver like tails in a couple of months. Oh, yeah. wicked! Oh, well, there you go. Then are you going to do any straight cut brushes or are you yeah. Gonna, yeah, beaver tails straight oval. Oh, nice one. Hold on a minute. I'm getting lost here. Beaver tails. Yeah. What's the difference You're between sweating that and when a beaver we say tail? That. <laughs> Is that when it slightly elongates at the end? Like it's a, like a beaver tail. Yeah, so short, short and stubby almost. So, like, but that's so. what you grip onto. That's what. So rather than having yeah. the balance of these brushes, it's more well, it's just, it's just a palm. different sort of slightly shorter, fatter handle. I, I, I really like these. They, yeah. I, I think they're great. And that's, that's I'd, choo I'd choose them. I think I prefer them over the beaver tail. So um, run us through the cork as well. So same thing again. How did, how did you know? How did you even go about with that? Again, sure. just just research, research, many hours of just looking and searching. It's you know I've, I've got lucky, um, but it's a fantastic product. It, it does exactly what it says, and uh, I'm really happy with it. Are yeah. there loads of 
children in China with paint warrior hats now after spending a busy summer making all of these? No, <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't have thought so. Them hats are well expensive. <laughs> <laughs> the month's wages. Yeah. Right, okay. All right, so, Kevin, look, before we finish, how can people connect with you online and see your content on TikTok? Um, so our platform is obviously Paint Warrior. You can just... Not the three other fake ones I found during no, this interview. There's no, three yeah. fake... The real one. We've got the real one. The real, the real one's deal. got 140-something followers, so you'll know it's him. <laughs> the, the real 100, one? 140, 141,000 followers. Sorry, excuse me. No, it's more than that, isn't it? No, on, on um, Instagram I'm talking about. There's three uh, fakes on Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so on Facebook, we got 325,000. Instagram, 142K and right. TikTok, 760. I feel so inadequate. <laughs> <Same like that. laughs> I'm just like so impressed by the whole setup. Number one decorator, got his own merch, which yeah. we love, bought the merch in, got, he's got it going on, Kevin. And this is, this is without even touching on some of your story. Um, which well, yes, on that note, because there is so much more to talk to you about, Kevin. So we're going to get you back on again next week, if that's yeah, all wicked, right. man. And cool. we're going to talk about your experience visiting... Blah, blah, blah. You're going to talk about your experience visiting prisoners completing a decorating course and we'll talk about your background in the trade in more detail right you can hear this show again from 10 p.m right here on fix radio with more great music subscribe to the podcast to get all of our latest episodes and stay tuned for down tools with trevin rich which is up next let's end the show with rihanna pondy replay on fix radio <laughs> Welcome to the Painting and Decorating Show. I'm Joel Bardo with Tov Von Joel. As always, and returning for another appearance today is the paint warrior, Kevin T. Hey, 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 right, he's and back. He's back, baby. Last week we talked about Kevin's success on TikTok that's seen him reach over three quarters of a million followers and over 25 million likes on the platform. And today we talked to Kevin about his life experiences on and off the brushes, his experiences going into a prison to meet with prisoners completing an MVQ in our trade and much, much more. And there's going to be some great songs from the likes of Pearl Jam, Bruce Springsteen, Primal Scream and more if we have time. Hello, chaps. Hello, Kevin. Hello. How are we doing? How are we doing? How How are we doing? Are we? Yeah, good. good. Thanks for having me back. No, Kevin's man. back, but good. also assistant producer Jack is back. Now, I don't know if you know this, Jack, but we've all got a sort of nickname here and Marks is Mad Frankie Fraser. So you are now following on on the East End Villain theme, Jack the Hat McVitie and Mark Frankie Fraser behind the buttons. <laughs> we're so old cockney knees up in here, we're going to roll out the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's, that, that's so, the intro. <laughs> Todd's still buzzing off them squishies you brought in last time. Yeah, Kevin. mate. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so how's things, chaps? We well? We all good? We're all busy? Good. Tired? Yeah, all we're right. good. Looking forward to this show. Really am, Kevin. Like We've had a bit of a chat off air and uh, some of your story. I don't know how much we'll get involved in the show but what an interesting man you are and an impressive gentleman as well so yeah can't wait to be hearing a bit more about your work on and off the tools absolutely cool. absolutely and you see it's, it, weather seems to be oh, i'm getting old now i'm just love talking about the weather and stuff like that i'm starting, yeah, to, see, important I'm starting to see the flowers coming out and i'm like it's just you know spring is in the air yeah, baby spring uh, is like we, we need it it's just a little glimpse of sunshine just changes everything doesn't yeah, it it's man. so good for it your does. mental health i just can't yeah. bear the gray cold and wet like it's just gloomy yeah. and horrible yeah, isn't it? yeah my missus hates yeah. it when i call her that no, so. <laughs> okay, that was good. Didn't it? <laughs> that, just, that just killed the room. <laughs> well, okay, let's bring in our next guest, it's Joel's <laughs> missus. Come on down. <laughs> Okay, oh, well, let's start with all the small things from Blink 182. That's what she calls me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try and dig yourself out of this hole. Uh, brilliant. I'm Joel Bardo with Tov and Joel, and we're talking to the paint warrior, Kevin Tingley, on today's show. Kevin, mate, good to have you back in the studio with us. You're welcome. Um, Thank right. you for having me. So, Kevin, way before the TikTok success um, and the incredible work you've done, how did you get started in our trade and why decorate him? Um, well, oh God. So twenty odd years ago, I actually f I fell into it. I, I was on a I was on a path of destruction. Um, I didn't have the best upbringing. Um, I had a couple of options: one, um, go to prison; two, move away and start a new life. And mm. um, we went with, went with option two. So. Yeah, well, good for you, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's a real turning point there. Um, which you told us about earlier. So that's really interesting how sort of your life took that direction just at the right time. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, 
scary, scary times, but yeah, it worked out well. Oh, good for you. So how did you actually get into, what, what, how did you get into decorating then? Where, so was, when, where did that come about yeah. where you could actually sort of go, you had the option to sort of get into it then? So like I say, we, I, had, I had two options. One was to, you know, carry on down a path or one was to move away. I moved away um, mm. with my partner who was pregnant at the time. And um, we went up to Milton Keynes. Um, her, mother, her mother lived there um, with, her, with her partner and he was a decorator. Oh, he, okay. he offered me a he offered me a job for fifty pound a day right. um, to pay the bills and you know it was pretty much my first proper job and yeah. I sort of got good at it quite yeah, quick and yeah, uh, yeah I'd never looked back really. That's yeah. such a great way to start when people just give you a hand up. I think mean, I'm I'm all for that. If I can help someone out like nephews or people I know, yeah. like usually mm. sort of like young men that might be on the same sort of destructive path that sounds like yeah. you were that I certainly was. Just get them in for a day, a bit of cash and hand work, and it just gives them a taste of it and shows them you can actually earn a bit of money. Yeah, and yeah. It's so important across such a, a different spectrum of things, even just being with another responsible sort of mentoring style male. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It can, it's, it's so important. It's a really credible way to get into the trade. You don't have to do the college route. Mm. Sometimes just working mm. with someone that takes you under their wing. Exactly, yeah. yeah. That's and an interesting that's an interesting point to make as well because I mean there are some of some decorators out there that go, you know, they only say, you know, you have to you have to go to college to be truly established. But I must be honest, some of the best decorators I know didn't go to college. Honest to God, the guy who taught me, I I've never come across a decorator like it. He was mm. definitely he was so precise and anal about everything you know everything mm. it had to be right and his 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 quote was every day like you're only as good as your last job mm. um mm. and if it ain't right the amount of times i had to do things two three four five times right because he wasn't happy with it and he goes you used to learning curve you just got to be right yeah so, you, need, you need the right mental don't you really yeah, yeah, yeah and to yeah, have yeah. that passion and obviously back in the day when we was all probably getting started let's say at least 20 years ago i'd imagine we we're all similar age they didn't have all the dustless sanding the electric sanders it was all done by hand it really was an unrecognized sort of art and it's a shame that those expert elite sort of self-taught or, or college sort of heritage decorators had, don't get any of the exposure because social media wasn't around at the time mm. but imagine some of the work and craftsmanship that we, we've seen and learned from over our time mm. yeah yeah so like i mean obviously you're well established on obviously the social media stuff as well uh, another question so do you do much training at all do you like do you kind of like pursue more things like just, you know to advance with anything or do you think it's not even that necessary for you for you where you're at right now with your business? As in training myself, up, well, you know, up like, in my own skills. Yeah, like, uh, is there anything that you've sort of be, been sort of investing in more or? Yeah, you know, I think we, we've, done a, we've done a few courses. We've done some like uh, epoxy resin courses, Venetian plaster, uh, okay. UPVC spraying, because that's one right, thing yeah, that's quite yeah. popular. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we, do, we do try to keep um, up to date with what's going on. Yeah, basically. but that's because you, you with your business though. That's because you want to pursue those yeah. kind of things, like you yeah. say the UPV spraying. Yeah. You know, right? Okay. Could be yeah, an angle yeah. there for some paint warrior courses where you you teach some courses. I'm saying. Yeah, I, I get asked a lot about stuff like that, but you know, having the time, running mm. a business or well, a couple, um, and having a family, you know, I'd. Yeah, it's training. Yeah, hundred percent. Because it's all about finding that balance, isn't it? Exactly. So you know, you can just be over overworked. Like, I think we. We are a lot of the times, mm. isn't we? But I think you've got to find that right balance be between enjoying what you do, but you know, spending your time, that sort of downtime, free time with your family and stuff like that as well. If you don't get that, because that's why there's so many, you see so many people, especially like on social media, and they're going, mm. oh, I can't, I can't handle it. I'm going to like hang out the brushes or, or whatever. You know, you seem really struggling because it's just, it can be so intense, just, you know, this, just all the time. Yeah. And the thing is as well, like, if I just want to make a point, like with the social media stuff, it's, it's, I bet it's like it's another job on top of your job. Oh, it's a full it? job now, social media. We've got a social media guy at Fix who, whose job is to run the social media. Mm. Yeah. So when I was also in the trades, trying to do it as well, like you said, Joel, you're on the tools doing work and you're juggling that by doing the social media. It takes time to sit and put mm. the edit this stuff together. Even even might take an hour to do it all properly for doing the video and things. Yeah. It's, it's time consuming. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Put your missus in the air going, get off your phone. You're always on your phone. It's... I'm working. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> with you. in his bikini. You know? <laughs> <laughs> in shots of his pictures backside. <laughs> I never get stopped getting hassle. I'm being on my phone. I don't own a laptop. I, use, I do everything on my phone. I'm a lover. Yeah. I hate technology, but leave me alone. I'm doing work on the phone. Get off the phone. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't, look, it doesn't look like you're working, does yeah. it, when you're no, on the phone? But, exactly. but you're right. I do all of my stuff on my phone. Literally yeah. everything, all, everything. All my invoices, like... all my quotes, all my Instagram, yeah. everything. Everything's on the phone, yeah, yeah. 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 
Right, okay. So, uh, Kevin, you've um, you've also had quite a traumatic experience away from the brushes, which we're keen to talk about next, if that's okay with you, mate. Sure. Um, right, here's Pearl Jam. Jeremy, you're listening to The Painting and Decorating Show. I'm Joel Bardle with Tov on Joel, and we're talking to the paint warrior, Kevin Tingley, on today's show once again. Right, so, Kevin, you, um, you recently went into a prison to meet up with the prisoners uh, completing an NVQ in decorating, which I yeah. think is really admi admirable as well, mate. I think that's, that's yeah. really good. That's a great um, thing to do. This must have been quite a sort of strange experience for you because you had something happen to you that's a real kind of traumatic story. So would you mind sharing with us what that's, what happened to you? Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, a couple, couple, couple of few years, well, three years ago this, uh, this month. Um, yeah, I was walking back from uh, my nan's funeral and um, I was mistakenly um, taken for somebody else and I was uh, attacked and stabbed eight times. Um, yeah, so... Flipping heck, mate. That's horrendous. I mean, that, that, that everything in that, what you just said then, so you're walking back from your nan's funeral. Yeah. You've been attacked and stabbed as well. Yeah, well, they attacked me from behind. I didn't I didn't know any, you know, what was happening. Um, yeah, they just stabbed me twice in the back of the head, four, four times in the back. It's properly yeah. attempted murder then. There's yes. no doubt about stabbing someone in the head and, and yeah. in the back. That's full on attempted murder. Yeah. That's really, really as serious as it gets. And I was only, it? I was... I'm only familiar with this story because I saw actually one of like a post on Facebook yeah. and I saw, I saw the story. So th it turns out there was mistaken identity as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. my word. Yeah. They thought I was somebody else, and if, if I'm honest, um, it was it was over a hundred and eighty pound drug debt with some other yeah some other some other group. I don't know. How old were these l l the lads that did it? Like they were like 19, 20. Mm. Yeah, they were quite young. Very young, mate. Yeah. That is awful. Absolutely awful. So, I mean, that must have had a massive impact on you, like physically yeah. and mentally. Do you know what? Ev yeah, my my whole world come crashing down that day. Um, I just, you know, it was. I thought I was gonna die. I, I said goodbye to my kids. Oh, um, I got. I woke up in hospital and then had to go and have an emergency operation. Um, I, d I said I don't want to have an operation because I was scared I wouldn't wake up if they put me to sleep. And yeah, it was a long recovery. I laid in bed for months, depressed, um, didn't didn't want to get up and do anything. It's an absolute miracle that you that you survived that. I mean, have have you had any um, like physical um, sort of repercussions from it? Has, has anything like changed in your in your life as a result oh, of your injuries? Yeah, yeah, loads. Um, I've had I've had another operation since I've I've got. Um, sort of seven, eight, nine scars on my stomach just from the operation. So like me, I, I lifted up a bed um, when I went back to work and um, the operation, where the, when they first operated on me, they cut me up my stomach and, you know, they had to repair some organs. And I lifted up a bed and it just went and I ended up with like 12 hernias. Oh, um, so I had to go back and get it all fixed and it was just horrific. So, yeah. And I, I can't, I can't sort of like work on myself anymore. Like my, I wake up in pain. I go to bed in pain. I can't really do too much down the gym. I'm scared to lift anything heavy. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't get my body back to how it was now. Well, I tell you what, mate. I think that is an absolutely awful story. But I tell you what, the name, how appropriate the name, the Paint Warrior, because look at where you've got to now, mate. I mean, on the last show, you you came in. You you've got a successful business. You've got ridiculously a, the following on your social media is incredible. You got your own brushes. You got your own cork. I think, man of applause. Yeah, you know, I think Thank where you. you've come from, mate. I tell you what, I think um, you should be proud of yourself. And, and you know, it's 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 incredible. It's an incredible story, mate. I and mean, we really appreciate you telling it as well because that is that's a traumatic experience. And I yeah. think um, where you are now, mate, I think it's so admirable. I think is you've done really well for yourself. So it's, it's really, really shocking. And thank God you were sort of found and helped to to yeah. Help to yeah. hospital and however that process happened. And I think. It's acknowledged that the the culprits were caught and charged, and um, yeah, uh, yeah, unbelievable story, very humbling. And I didn't actually know because I read the article, but it didn't reveal some of the details that you just had, which makes it even even more shocking. Because there's no excuse, you, there's no possible reason to put a knife into someone's head unless you want to kill them, and that is yeah. that is absolutely terrifying. Yeah, it's a sick world, mate. It's absolutely sick world. But you know what? Again, we're we're going to be talking about as well soon. We're going to talk about you you going into the prisons and teaching. I mean, again, I mean, you gone from that experience and then you're doing that, which again, I think is just absolutely incredible, mate. So right, okay, we're going to talk about 
your visit to HMP Lay Hill next. You're listening to Vix Radio, the Builders Station. This is the Painting and Decorating Show. I'm Joel Bardal with Tov on Joel, and we're talking to Kevin Tingley about his experience visiting prisoners at HMP Lay Hill that are completing an NVQ in decorating. Right, Kevin, so how did the prison visit come about, first of all, and were you sceptical because of what happened to you previously? Yeah, so um, I, 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 I met this woman at the um, P&D show and um, she introduced herself and told me what she does and she teaches um, prisoners that were actually in an open prison, um, so quite low risk. Um, and she said, it, um, would I mind coming down to have a chat with them and showing them a few bits and pieces? And yeah, I, I sort of agreed to it, if I'm honest. Afterwards, I wish I never and um, it played on my mind mm. A hell of a lot and I thought about turning around a few times on the way down there but um, I, I felt like I had to do it probably for myself mm. um, and not only that you know I'd, with with my upbringing um, I feel like everybody deserves a second chance and um, you know I, I've I've yeah from where I've come from I've been given a second chance so why why shouldn't anyone else have that opportunity so yeah, well, mate, again, I admire your mindset there. I think that's just really mm. good. So talk us through the day then. Who did you meet and what were you observing and doing on the visit to the prison? So it was it was um, quite interesting. We, we went into their little little classroom area and I, I met um, several uh, prisoners, um, if, if I'm honest. I can't remember all of their names. Um, but they were just basically showing me what they're doing and mm. how they do it and what what the courses they were on and um, how they're progressing. And ultimately, I think the main the main point of my visit was really I showed them that, like how I do my cutting in and stuff like that. And um, they they the whole point of the, me visiting was probably for them to ask questions and get a, more of an idea of um, how decorating could benefit them. Mm. And after I spoke to them for a while, you know, they were they, they seemed like they were really pumped and excited afterwards. And yeah. they all wrote me a nice letter as well. So oh, wicked, man. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. Gave them the gift of hope that they've they've seen a blueprint yeah. of what yeah, you've yeah. done and it's something to do. And that's so important. You could have, do you know what I mean? The ripple effect of just, even if just one of those was inspired enough exactly. to do that. Exactly. The ripple effect on them, their family, yeah. their, their, their society they live in. Well, wouldn't it be such nice an important as well? thing to do? Wouldn't it be nice as well that, like, say, when they're released and then they set up a successful decorated business yeah. or even come on the show do you know what i mean yeah, yeah. that would be um, that would be brilliant um so what did you take away from the experience and do you have any plans to do anything like that again um do you know what i what i took away do you know what I, they definitely don't have enough funding because um you know I, I, the setup isn't great i've sort of you know they could have had a better setup if i'm honest um what sort of stuff were you doing then like so was it like brush and roller sort of yeah so at the time they were at a stage where they were lining walls oh okay you know but it's how like, they cutting the paper out of interest they were they've got scissors <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right, okay yeah. I wasn't sure yeah. they, they <laughs> really made, really made it out of a blade and a bit of Plastic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. They, yeah, they've got they've got all the gear. Like I say, it's an open yeah. prison, so there's yeah, no yeah. there's no wall around it. Technically, oh. they can walk off. Oh right, okay. So they're like right. on their they're, they're sort of like on their last stretch of their sentence, and basically yeah. they've they've just behaved and they've they've learned and they've, they've yeah, passed yeah. courses, and now they've right. been given this chance to coach. Okay. Yeah, they've had to jump for yeah. a lot of hoops yeah, to, be, yeah. to even get moved to an open prison yeah. to have that opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, it's and right. I think some of them can go home on the weekend as well. So It's part, yeah. Of, yeah, it's oh, part okay. of the pre-release, isn't it, after yeah. a, long, a long sentence for yeah. certain crimes, I think. Uh, oh, fair yeah. enough. Do you think it helped you with your, your, your other experience that you were telling us about previously? Now, now when you went in, into the prison and came out, did, that, did it feel like it helped you? move on in any way or I don't know if that's the right sort of no way I mean I did I, I was I come out and I was buzzing I was really I was proud of myself it was a proud moment for mm. me um it was a little bit emotional it was like a, a mixed emotions I yeah, was just yeah, like I, I don't bet. know didn't know what I was feeling but um on my way home I was I, I drove home and I was buzzing so wicked mate that's brilliant well, look, I think such an accomplishment and such a legacy you're you're creating and leaving behind for your kids as well. There's just less lessons for life and what you've overcome. Yeah. So it well, off air earlier, Todd mentioned about uh, you writing a book, and I think that's a great idea. I think you've, yeah. got, you've got plenty of stuff to put into a book there, you know? Oh, okay. plenty, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, there's, if there's any writers listening. Yeah, yeah, get in touch if anyone's interested in taking <laughs> this story on. Yeah. I might do a pop-up book when you open it up. Just comes out of the roller. <laughs> right, okay, let's come back to wrap up today's show after Rocks from Primal Scream on Fix Radio.
I'm Joel Bardle, we're Tov on Joel, and we're bringing today's painting and decorating show to an end where we've been joined again by Kevin Tingley, the paint warrior. Right, one thing I've wanted to talk about on the show recently is awkward customer interactions or gaffes when it comes to texting or communicating with customers, because I think we've all been there. I, something on Facebook, funnily enough, you know the Facebook memories pop up, and yeah. one popped up the other day, and, I, and what I said was, I text, I emailed this customer, I said, Oh, I should be able to pop round. I'm just, I, what I intentionally went to say, I'm looking at a couple of jobs. What I did say, I got the J, I, I didn't put J, I put N. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but luckily, I caught it just before I sent it, and I thought, that's good. But my mate, <laughs> my mate had seen this Facebook post, and he commented, he went, oh, you think that's bad? He goes, I put, to apply two coats of brilliant, and he went to put white, but he got the W and the S <laughs> mixed up on the keyboard and he had to send his quote <laughs> off to his customer. I was so. once at a wedding and I tried to text my missus under the table and I tried to give her the old, oh, you're the fittest bird in here, but it said you're the fattest bird in here. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> the, the pig. <laughs> you say at a wedding? Was it your wedding? <laughs> oh, my God. No, I was trying to be all like that under the table, you know what I mean? Like some smooth operator. <laughs> she just looked up at me from her cake, smeared away. <laughs> the pig. It was, it was an ex missus, long gone. She doesn't listen to the show. Yes, yeah, so, can you, can you text? I can't text on an iPhone. I've got massive thumbs, man. The old spoon thumbs. I could do the old knocky, t knock your face. Yeah, this was an I old school. I could write Shakespeare on that. <laughs> yeah, that door, well, that's gone dead again, isn't it? <laughs> do, you know, do, you know, do you know what? Apparently, if you put three monkeys in a room with three type, we have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got fixed radio, yeah. fake decorating show. No, but by the law of averages, if you left them there for eternity, to so say these monkeys never needed to eat or sleep, yeah. eventually they would type out the complete works of Shakespeare, like letter for letter. <laughs> but it would take eternity, but they would eventually do it. Sure. Just by randomly like, going up, putting one, pooing in their hand, yeah, throwing yeah, it. Yeah, in. written in it shit. It would keep going, but eventually they would do it in the right order. <laughs> what do you think about that, gang? How did you yeah, even... That's how no, we write these how scripts. Do you even about that? <laughs> that's how we write these scripts. I it? am a fountain of knowledge. <laughs> Especially anything primate related, oh, I'm big on. Good. Um, right, what's the cringiest thing you or someone else working with you has said to a client? Maybe like face to face. Is there anything they sort of said and you think, why did you say that? I had a client ask me, did you just go to the toilet? Was it a stand up or a sit down? And I felt that was a bit intrusive because oh, I'm, like, I'm like a cat and I'm like, I don't want to discuss what happens behind that door. <laughs> I'm very clean and tidy and quiet. Well, you lick your bum off. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what, what did you want to know if I sat down for? Because she was one of these control freak nuts. I felt like really violated. I actually was working in someone's house before. This is when I was doing like work for the council. And um, I said to this woman, I went, do you mind if you use a toilet? And I, I, and I mean, I was desperate to use a toilet and it was a number two. And she actually asked me, she went, poo are we? And I thought, I can't believe she's asked me. So yeah. I said, oh, I suppose. She said, no, because she had to oh, watch no, it in the toilet. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> oh, so it's, it's a tricky subject, using the toilet. So I just put on a pillow instead. Yeah. So, um, well, about um, anything like a customer said to you, have you had it like, you must have had some like weird moments, surely, like yeah. customers or said something I strange or... I've been, I've been caught out in a, in a really awkward situation where I was... Um, painting well i was getting ready to paint a uh, an apartment for these two women that were actually a couple and um i was i was sorting the uh, clearing stuff out of the kitchen and stuff and something fell on the floor and it was a it was a wrapper and um, i was like oh sorry and i bent down to pick it up and i handed them this thing that was called the big red and i was like i was like no i looked at it and I looked at her, and then I looked at him, and I looked at her, and I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then I looked like the big red. I was just, I was just, I just didn't know where to look. I'll give you the wink. Yeah, I've got a little yeah. pink. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, is that really a thing? Like, I, I was once um, yeah. speaking to a client, a couple, after I'd just done some decorating for them, and they had their dad there, so it was the granddad, and I was going, yeah, I've done this, I've done that, and I couldn't, I don't know what animal will have got let loose on that ceiling. It was in such a oh, state, and I went oh, off oh, ranting no. about this animal, <laughs> and it was, of course, it was granddad. <laughs> Yeah. I painted it. And granddad's just standing there yeah. and like, I, I was going off on one. And then oh, was like, no. Who was it? And they went there at him. Him, granddad did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Right, okay. So let us know what the cringiest interactions you've had with clients. Um, text 81 400 and start your message with Fix. Direct message us via the Fix Radio app or DM myself or Todd Von Joel on Insta and we'll read it on the next show. You can hear the show again tonight from 10 here on Fix Radio. Download and subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcasts online. Uh, before we go, big thanks.
Kevin for coming yeah. into the studio for these uh, couple of shows. Brilliant shows, yeah. what a guest. Yeah, absolutely fantastic, mate. It's been really great to get you on and uh, oh, come you. back on again in the future, mate. Yeah, we, definitely. Right, and we're going to end today's show with Glory Days from the boss, Bruce Springsteen. <laughs>